Welcome back. We're here in the studio for another episode of Swarf Reacts. We've got a load of videos to go through, so let's get started. Wow, this is shiny. What's this used for? Oh, here we go. So we've got a... We've got a, sorry, we've got a milling machine here. I'm quite mesmerized by this, by the depth of cut. So obviously we're going down full. So we've got your X axes, your Y axes. Is it, this isn't a horizontal, is it? Right. You, yeah, is this a horizontal? No. Right, I need to give a bit of a shout out here because this is from Dan at Vixen CNC where oh, we've just is this, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just Thank been. Thank you, Dan. And this <clears throat> is hot on his Mazak Integrex. Okay. So obviously it's coming from the right hand side, isn't it? That head <clears throat> is amazing. That head just, just, them Mazaks just blow my mind every so time. So which I see angle them. is it coming from? So it can come from anywhere you want it. So it's, it's fully. The whole head just moves oh, wow. wherever. And it's great because you'll see how. Oh, yeah, you can see now. So now it's coming from the top. So you've got, is it five, is it a five axis? I wouldn't even like to say what it is. Yeah. Tell me whether it's five axis, horizontal, vertical. Um, obviously, in this one, look, we're going full depth of cut with that tool. Absolutely no problem. Chips absolutely fly in um, at a high speed rate as well, uh, feed rate as well, it looks like. Um, and just no problem at all. And then what we're doing is we're turning the chalk. So the material, um, the component is turning around whilst... The head is turning around. I'm a bit mesmerized by this. What's so. great with that with that machine as well is obviously that's got a milling tool in. You can tool change it to pull lathe tools out so, as well, and then spin the spin and the then component, spin the material. and then go through. So you can it. turn, you can mill, you can broach, you can. There's the, their machines are extremely impressive. You should be a sales guy. <laughs> Okay, so this looks very familiar. What machine is this on? This is on a grob. You can just see the G on the spindle just come into shot for a second. Oh, yeah, you can. So what is this part? Is it like a... The, I'm guessing this was sort of a demonstration part. It looks more like a... It looks like, like a, a turbine or something, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. But this, this was done at their open house that we filmed recently. Yeah. And this was actually filmed by our very own Mr. Chris Thomas. Okay. And it's absolutely That's unreal. That's quick, isn't it? Even the way it spins round and it's all like the, the tool is tracking the movements of it spinning so it, it doesn't lose any time. You know what I mean? It's so, it's, it's, it's so synchronised. That's just exactly unreal. what I mean, yeah. But this, so you see the two vices. So obviously it's driven. Yeah. Um, if I'm right, please tell me if I'm wrong, but... That isn't just driven by one and then the other one's just free floating. It's actually driven on both sides. Both sides, it's got so to it be. It keeps it perfectly yeah. accurate. Because it, it, what you might get is it, it might get a bit of distortion. And if that's moving round as well, the weight of the material might, obviously, if this has got, if the top one's got no clamping force on it, obviously you, you won't have your brakes on, will you? Because you need to constantly keep it moving. It might start to jutter and, you know, so they need to be in sync, like you would have maybe on a lathe. You need to have both um, chucks concentric to each other so that they don't spin out and you don't get any differation. Differ, differ, can't get my words out of it. Differ, differation, whatever the word is, between the two. But what's impressive as well, and obviously it's not in this video, in, in another video that was filmed on the same time, was how, um, how that part didn't move at all in roughing. So in another video, they actually, they, they roughed it all out. The top vice unclamps moves out the way spins the part round and then as it's spinning drops the vice down and clamps it as it's spinning and it yeah was... technology these days is just getting unreal and obviously we with... could watch this for hours and obviously what is one of the main key points of a grob swarf of how it how it machines the swarf drops away and just gets out cleans the way. out the way yeah and you can see that look at the way it's chipping off and that is that's obviously been milled from a block hasn't it and that's a lot of material not wasted material because obviously it needs to come off but great swarf evacuation you imagine that on a three axis by the time you're halfway down that entire part be covering swarf and you'd be cutting your own swarf. the apprentice would be in cleaning it out mate <laughs> jokes is this goering 
Uh, yes. This looks like Goering. I think it is. Um, maybe, probably they dive at all. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. So this is just basically showcasing how quick and how fast we can get into the material at full depth, go in, clear the swarf. You can see how lovely that's chipping. Um, obviously, uh, no coolant in there. So obviously you saw the swarf change color as well. So we've obviously got some air blow on there. Um, but it just shows you how diverse the, the Goering tools are, that it's able to get down to depth. And it's still running at a quite a high feed rate. What did, what tool did you think it was? The diver. It is. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Dave, the Dave, diver side carbide end though. Dave Hudson's going to be very proud of me. <laughs> um, no, I've seen this tool quite a lot and you can tell by the tool holder as well. Um, but obviously Goering are well renowned for their diver catalogue um sort of tools and people just love them people just go back go back to them time and time again i went to a customer a couple of months ago they've been with Goering for over 20 years you know and to stay with one tool in supply for 20 years sometimes you just go oh maybe i'll try something new but Goering have always got the the options and the thing is don't forget new. doing a full slot cut is hard enough and at but that to depth, ramp in, yeah that's got to be ramping in at what 30 degrees and you cannot you cannot see any slow down in there any feed rate go down so it's fully blasting smack see you later and they also do a micro diver they do so what the possibilities are endless <laughs> oh this is uh a friction weld no not friction welding this is uh tig mag welding robot welding obviously Fantastic, is it not? No. Oh my God, I'm completely wrong. Laser cutting. Sack me. Five that isn't. Five axis laser cutting. And I know this because this is my video, oh. <laughs> which I didn't know. I was set up there, weren't <laughs> I really? Five axis laser cutting. That head just was unreal. These things. And this part is huge. You see these things, right? They're really coming into play, aren't they? And why not? These things. Now, I know people say, oh, automation's going to take my job. Well, yeah, it probably is, but you still need someone to program it. You still need someone to change things. You still need someone to maintenance it. They were that big and they were, it was made out of, If I'm sure it was two mil sheet metal that was made out of. Okay. And it took two guys to lift it off. Wow. Because if you look around the orange clamps, they're only just push down clamps. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't take much pressure. Not like with your milling or your turning. It doesn't take much pressure. So it's clamped down. No, because it's only like laser cutting, not only laser cutting, but you're basically cutting with a laser, aren't you? You're not forcing a tool into a material and clearing out But that, that machine was that big, we could have easily parked mine and your car in back to back easily that machine was and that was just we were there i haven't got a mini by the way we've got we've, <laughs> we've got, got skoda two, activity here and a cash nishan we've cash got two Fiat 500s <laughs> so that's huge isn't it it was a it was a brilliant machine and we didn't even know it was running when we walked past it because it was that quiet and obviously with laser machines and you can tell by the and color the, the smashing they have the to blah, have blah, them blah. special doors where windows so you can't see in them yeah, that's like why it's so green tinted windows and stuff yeah. isn't it that's why it looks so green but obviously when so it's like your visor and your helmet isn't it yeah but it was it was so impressive so that's all we've got time for for this episode if you have any videos or anything like that please send them in we'll go through them and i'll see you next time <laughs>